So for context, this is a person that was on Caleb Hammer's show and they came out with a TikTok about that experience. We like Caleb Hammer, we watch Caleb on this channel, but at the same time, of course, if there's anything to unravel, it would be nice to observe it. Obviously, I'm just a person with an opinion. If you disagree, cool. If you don't disagree, great. I feel like I needed to make this video because I need to bring um, some points out to the public, especially um, with the fact that regarding financial audit with Caleb Hammer, this is getting to a point where I'm not playing anymore because this show, Caleb and his team are pushing out to the public that they are here helping, that their main goal, that the reason why Ooh, that's the mistake. You can't you can't brand yourself as a helper. Asmin, and I love Asmin. Zach talks about this all the time, right? You brand yourself as like the helper, the good person, the perfect person. People are gonna look to dismantle that. People wanna destroy that. People are gonna wait for you to fail. No, no, I stopped helping people years ago. What I do is I share my knowledge in hopes that it will help you. But if it doesn't help you, that's not my business. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just sharing my life. I'm just sharing my opinions. I'm sharing my worldview. I'm sharing my advice. I'm sharing my my fun. This is what I do. And if it helps you, great. And if it doesn't help you, not my business. People who dedicate their life to like helping people, like you better know who you're helping, you know, because hurt people hurt people. And sometimes you can't help the people you're trying to help and they will hurt you because of it. They are under the guise of helping people when really they're out publicly shaming and humiliating people. And that's exactly what is happening with me. And I'm not sitting here playing a victim. I'm just defending what's happening to me based off of the conversation and the intention that was brought to me for help. Hmm. Okay, that I applied for. You know, a lot of people struggle with finance finances because of mental health, because of boundaries or education. And look, ultimately, there's gonna be a part of the population that like doesn't utilize help, all right? You can help them in every possible way and they still won't figure their shit out. Actually, one of the reasons I kind of think like a sort of basic income thing might work. Okay, you know how conservatives are always like, people are gonna take care, like take advantage of the welfare system. Everyone takes advantage of everything if they're the kinds of people that take advantage of things. And I do think a lot of the people that are probably interested and I'm going on Caleb Hammer's show are people who are looking to take advantage of him. And so there's sort of this like irony that goes along with it. And usually you can tell, have you ever tried to help somebody that won't help themselves? You tried to, have you ever tried to help somebody that just like won't eat the cupcake? It's a very frustrating process because you're thinking if I just love them hard enough, if I just get them the right therapy, if I just get them money, and then you can give them all of those resources and they still don't do anything with it, somebody will always be that part of the population. So the question is, are you dealing with that kind of a person? Are you dealing with a person that's seriously going to get better if i truly would have known i would have been ridiculed and labeled such horrible slandish things the the way that he portrayed me in the picture is it because of the fact that i'm a mom of five kids like you should be ashamed of yourself i have five kids so five i kind of have to manage kids. five kids working over she's 32 with five kids that's pretty intense nights and then um i also have to shorten that like i get out at six in order to you know get them to school and stuff so i believe there are two other children unaccounted for right i don't get child support for both of them why um the so three guys so three different guys five kids is that what i'm hearing youngest um she's about to be two in july in Ju she got <sighs> sis so she got pregnant two years ago bro three years ago i guess and had this baby after having all those other babies and a divorce and no child support basically Why must you have children? Why? All this conservative narrative, like everyone's on birth control. Really? Because these bitches be having babies. Why? Why would you have more babies? That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you keep having children? June on the 24th. And I don't just mean abortions. Why don't any of you use condoms or birth control? Or just like, oh my God, or both. Use birth control and a condom. Our dad is completely evading i mean they've been they've tried locating him like four times and oh wow he's a chameleon i don't think you have the best pick in men i do not okay i do not that's why i'm single yeah, yeah. okay and have you talked to a lawyer about any of this um see if mm. there's any pro bonos out there for single moms no actually work I, really haven't, I haven't done any of that route because I, I did do the research um, 
like two years ago when I did, you know, after the year passed and the child support was still waiting to be, because I have a hearing that's set, just waiting for him to voluntarily give Texas permission. You're bad at your job. You're not a bad person. You're bad at your job. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. You do not have the tools to be a better mother because you don't even have the self-control to know what kind of discipline you should give your kids because you don't have discipline. She's not a bad person. She is a bad mom. Mom is a job. Parenting is a job. If Okay, I'm not moralizing her. I'm not saying she's a bad person. She's a bad mom. If you do not know how to tell your children no and give them discipline and be reasonable with how you raise them, that is what being bad at your job looks like. You're not a bad person, but you are a bad mom. You're bad at your job. Being a mom is a job. And I think a lot of unqualified people be applying for this job. Boundaries probably when you don't have money and you don't have money, so. Yeah, you're right. What were you giving? <laughs> um, just things that they'd been asking for over time. Rocks um, and sticks, go outside and play, it's free. Mm. Roblox. Oh, okay. Um, All right. There it is. Toys. That's, that's that. There. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Food. Something, something a little more definitely perfect. food. What do you mean? Eating out. Eating out is you something that they really like. It. So I. Okay. What are the ranges? What are the ages of the kids? Let me get the ages. So, uh, youngest, oldest. Uh, okay. So my daughter is one and a half. My son is three. And then I have three other daughters. They're eight, 12, and 14. This is a estrogen filled household, isn't it? Yes, four girls, one boy. What's the living situation currently? Um, so it's me and my kids, and then my mom lives with us. How many rooms? Hold on. And then I have three other daughters. They're eight, 12, and 14. This okay, that's a that's an interesting age range. That's difficult. Is a estrogen-filled household, isn't it? Yes, four girls, one boy. What's the living situation currently? Mm -hmm. um, so it's me and my kids, and then my mom lives with us. How many rooms? Three. Okay, and your mom. Yes. For why? Um, she's, um, she's disabled. She's on a walker, so she kind of oh, needs a little extra assistance. Um, How are you okay? Wow. So I'm pretty much the one that helps out the most, unless I'm working. Then my well, that makes sense, guys. She didn't just get here. She probably had a bad mom, like, but not a morally bad mom. I'm so sick of having to caveat because you guys are so fucking sensitive. You can't raise adults this incompetent and tell me you were good parents, right? Or. Or maybe your kid is an anomaly and they're truly just a piece of shit. So, so yes, there is going to be an occasion where you have very, very good parents and really shit kids or good enough parents who did somewhat bad and got really shit kids. But ultimately, like most of the time, a majority of the world is just like you're continuing cycles of trauma, cycles of expectation. So it's not like she's an evil person, but now she's coming out against Caleb Hammer and it feels really weird to do that when... Like, again, you're not presenting yourself. And even the thumbnail didn't make it seem this way. Like, she's not presenting herself, like, out of the... Like, she's not crazy. She's just making the same decision most Americans are making, most people around the world are making, which is bad financial decisions. She's not a bad person. She's just very bad with in terms of being responsible. Like, she's completely undisciplined, right? When you are speaking to somebody about their finances, just to make a comment about their sexuality or if they must love to be you know it, it, it's ridiculous like i am just because he felt he could make such an what did she just say i don't get it so i think well, in that why, moment so i was desperate why tell me what was happening though i want to know what was happening in your life that you went to uh me and ruin my life .com and applied to everything possible i was in that me ruin my life kind of mindset at that time so and we know you like getting f you have five children so <laughs> this is <laughs> oh i get the it wrong i get it i want to know what was happening in your life that you went to uh me and ruin my life .com and applied to everything possible i was in that me ruin my life kind of mindset at that time so and we know you like getting you have five children so this is the <laughs> wrong kind though okay okay so she was upset about that joke um okay i i know where i get why she was upset with the joke but it probably was like he was thinking it and like he you know he had like a 
Because honestly, I think we were all thinking it, but also it's like a funny joke, but obviously it could be inappropriate. I get it. If that's the sexual harassment she's talking about, like, now nah, that's silly. But, you know, it's it's kind of funny. And I, I, something like we would say, like, on my show, like here, but like maybe not on a financial show. But also, like, you know, like, it's not that. I don't think, I think it's contextual. Uh, I don't know if Caleb wants that to be a part of his shtick or not. It's up to him. You know, I don't think it's an objectively bad joke, but, you know, he probably, yeah, because it's not a, yeah, mm, it depends. It's so contextual. Yeah. I, yeah, it depends, you know, but also she had a baby a year and a half ago. She made so many bad decisions one after another. Sometimes I do think people don't want to admit when they've made bad decisions. But at the same time, man, this is hard. She's making a lot of shit decisions. Girl, she, I, I don't even know if she can make one good decision, bro. What's a good? I want to hear five good decisions she made this year. Because now she's saying even going on the show was a bad decision. And now she's posting TikToks, which is probably a bad decision. You know what I mean? Like how many bad decisions in a row could a person make before like that's just who they are right now? Like eat the cupcake, girl. Eat the fucking cupcake. Make one good decision. Example, get on birth control. Example, don't sleep with a man. Don't talk to a man. Okay? Like this person is the living example for the kids that she's raising and her kids are going to look at their mom and either like continue the cycle or be like, I don't want to live like my mom did. His entire comment base made that the focus of the video instead of my finances and i'm i'm crying let's let, let's get this straight right now like this happens to so many people who don't have a voice and while my feelings may be hurt i'm a very strong individual i'm a very strong person and i can make it through anything and people's judgments like this is where we're going with humanity right now okay i i'm a single female and i am going on a show that promise to help hmm. to talk about my finances hmm. and I'm being sexually harassed in the video. Is that what happened? Which allowed his viewers to make it okay. He, he, he made it okay to make them think it's okay. My main point was to receive help and that's what they told me they would give me. He started trying to hook me up with his producer, Noah, asking if I was interested in him. And it was just over the top. So it, it got really awkward. I just remember I politely declined. And then he mm. asked me right before filming, are, well, are you into girls? Like, do you want to date my other one? Like Veronica says, says, I've seen the episode and I'm surprised she feels that way. I feel like it was a pretty calm episode. Maybe that's my biases. I mean, we'll, we'll check it out. Okay. So across everything, we, 2,740 comes in from work currently, plus an extra thousand dollars from child support. And then the other child supports are just... We can't rely on them, right? No. So we'll just call what comes in $3,740 on a monthly basis. Yes. Hmm. That is hard. Single mom of yeah. four five, in a major five. city. Five in a major city. Absolutely. I, yeah. I got you. I got the sympathy. Hmm. I have to make that clear because I'm digging into you. <laughs> but, I, I want to mention it's like 111% of the time. The kids don't ever go what? to their fathers. Never. Oh, okay. Well, they all sound like pieces of so the fathers, not the kids. So I don't know if I'd want the kids there anyway. True. Right? Okay. True. What do you want your kids to know their deadbeat dads for? It's coming. Is no. or have we concluded? Lexi says, I can't tell if this dude is playing a character or if this is really he, really how he is. He's not like this in his podcasts with other people. He's calmer, obviously. I do think he plays up a lot of the shick for the show, um, which makes sense, but. Concluded the little journey of Motherhood. kids. We've definitely concluded that journey. Okay. Okay. Oh, Please, we don't have to so no more kids? Find a Where? husband down the line, like in four years or something. Yeah. Okay, so she didn't conclude having kids. Unless I find a husband down the line. That's 36. She's already 32. You're done, girl. You have five, five kids. See, my mom heard me say this. She goes, I had kids until I was 40. Yes, I know. But hello? Okay? Yeah. I'm okay. going from five to ten real quick. Okay. Maybe I can set you up with my producer Noah back there. He's no. single. And this is the sexual harassment she was talking about, too? mingling maybe we'll, we'll talk about that in the post show get you guys on a date i don't know i just you know i got stood just for context we saw her tiktok before this 
And she said he sexually harassed her, tried to set her up with his producer, tried to push Noah on her. Um, I apologize. You were, you were very late, then, which means I'm not getting my hair cut. And look at this. Maybe thing. the date isn't meant to be. Maybe timing means everything. Oh, yeah. So. so maybe you guys are going out instead. But you don't talk about those kinds of things when you're in a business setting, when you're doing an interview and you're truly trying to help someone this guy does not have his head on right mm. and people like me are being dragged through the mud over having children when that's not even supposed to be the focus point of the video in those spending percentages again <clears throat> stopping at the gas stations and all that other crap the miscellaneous bullshit. and if you combine all the crap that was unnecessary across every category we're seeing about 25 to 30 25 to 35 percent to potentially 40 percent at the high end was spent on bullshit, unnecessary, not needed for survival crap. Again, I'm not opposed to people getting unnecessary things. I get Starbucks. I want you to get Starbucks. Mm. You don't get to get Starbucks when we're borrowing payday loans. You don't Starbucks. get to get Starbucks when we're... We don't get to get McDonald's coffee when we're negative in our checking account two times a month minimum. We don't get to get McDonald's coffee when we can't pay our bills. I want you to. We live in reality. Reality can sometimes be a little bit of... A yeah. It definitely slapped me in the face this past two months. So. Mm -mm. And what's up with your car insurance? I don't, we didn't see that in the statements. What's up with my what? Car insurance. <clears throat> oh, f Oh, f On a brand new car, you don't have car insurance. Not only is it illegal, but now you don't even have car insurance. A AAA has the cheapest car insurance. It's so good. Get AAA, bro. What? What's that face? And I can't afford car insurance. Huh? You can't afford the two hundred dollars you spent on McDonald's for the month could be your car insurance money. <sighs> okay, this is what I mean to say when I say things that have to get done and then things we want, things that have to be paid for. Car insurance, if we have a car, okay, has got to be paid for. No fucking around with car insurance. Not worth it. Never worth it. AAA has great fucking insurance, okay? I'm assuming she doesn't have medical insurance. Fine, but you have kids, so come on, okay? <sighs> Ooh. Maiden says having a kid is what made me get real about my finances. I wish other people, I wish other people were motivated when they had kids to do better. Yo. Certain things have got to be paid. Rent, car insurance. Things that will fuck you over in the long run if they go very bad. This is, this is just absurd to the point where I feel like I have to make a video about it. And I'm not somebody who makes videos about anything. I don't like putting my shit out there. We're going to tell you you like being fucked. Um, you must really love getting fucked, don't you? That's what he told me in the video. A lot, something along those lines. And it, it's up for you to see. I was in that me run my life kind of mindset at that time so and we know you like getting you have five children so <laughs> this is what makes what makes somebody think it's okay to speak to them in that manner you have no idea of my history you have no idea of anything that i've gone through and this isn't about becoming a victim of this this is just making mm -hmm. people aware that if we think it's okay to start speaking to people in this manner and we think that it's okay to post things like this about people. Where are we headed? Where are we going right now? There is no empathy whatsoever. I, I, I'm lost for words right now because I'm in a position where I, I can only make a video and put myself out there and mm -hmm. let you know that this isn't a show that you want to be a part of. You're not going to receive any help. You're just going to receive this dynamic where you are being told by this person mm -hmm. and these, these, uh, this, uh, group that we'd really love to help you. We'd really love to get you on. We'd really love to hear your story. You know, it is YouTube. We are a little dramatic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Caleb mm -hmm. can be for the dramatic. Um, but there's nothing that we won't post that you're not comfortable with with or oh uh, as soon as i got out of that building and we stopped filming oh the nice communication stopped communication stopped period i never got permission so if she asks him to take it down will he i never saw any thumbnail video i never saw any video period i never saw a title we never sat down and talked about what the title would be okay so he's telling all of his millions of subscribers this okay and this is not the case 
it is very vague and often honestly it's rushed it's rushed uh, I mean, the second that the filming was over, he said, hey, give me your cash app. Gave him my ca gave him my cash app. He paid me the flat rate that is paid to everybody for going to mm -hmm. interview and, mm -hmm. and do the video mm -hmm. for our time, you know, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And up, boom, he was gone. People film multiple podcasts in a day. People have two hours of time. Even when I do collabs with people, they're like, hey, I'm free for 45 minutes or hey, I'm free for an hour. Like, yeah. People have back to back to back to back to back things. I think people think, because Caleb did this in the past, like where he tried to be more like a person. You can't be a person and run a business because people will take advantage of you. People won't know boundaries. They will have parasocial relationships with you. It's like, yeah, he's running a business, sis. Like, what do you want? Do you want him to be more professional or less? Because more professional means less time with Caleb. You know, all those things in the video that he spoke about, like the resources, like we're going to get you, we're going to stand here and be with you and support you uh, right after the show. We're going to get you, you know, somebody to talk to, to fix this situation and this situation. That stuff doesn't happen. This is all for views for him. Hmm. He is upkeeping a facade. We missed our last thing. Ooh. Yeah. So we took out the payday loan to make the bills due, but we didn't even use the payday loan. What did she use it for? To pay the minimum monthly payment on the car? Right. No wonder she was getting smeared in the comments, bro. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I'm uh, smiling. By the way, Dave Ramsey went in on a family who made $200,000 a year and kept saying they were living paycheck to paycheck and they were suffering. And he's like, what the fuck? And like, no matter if you're rich and you're spending money badly or if you're poor and spending money badly, it's like, bro, at some point, how are you going to call yourself a reasonable adult? Like, girl, why are we making these mistakes? You know what I mean? Like, this this is what I'm meaning. Like, I couldn't get my shit together until I worked on my mental health. So for me, philosophy help, mental health plays a huge role. It's okay. It's a cope smile. Get it. I get it. So, you know, I smile too when I'm nervous. A lot of those. Where'd the payday loan like, go to? That's I need to know. Where'd the payday like, loan go to? I feel like in to? the moment then, I think I really needed just groceries and stuff um, and just household items. So I ended up having to spend it on that instead. And then I said I would pay the, because I'm, I'm honestly, I'm always behind on my car payments. I, they're due like on the 28th and I pay them on the 6th when I get my child support check. Amazon, Amazon, okay. cash, uh, Apple Cash, I don't know. Okay, she said some of it's food. Where the f*** that went? I do. Where? So sometimes some of those that you'll see, like the hundreds are for um, like food trading. Huh? So my friends, my some of my friends who are also parents and single parents, they help me out with, because I work more, I got my food stamps taken. Work so work 30, two hours. They took almost stamps. all of them away. So I mean, I'm pretty much trading. I'll trade cash for them to help me get more. Oh, oh, she buys food stamps. I'm not this poor. I'm going to be real with you. I didn't come from a family that needed food stamps. Food stamps. See, this is what, and I'm going to say this again out loud, right? Because I don't, I believe in food. I believe in welfare programs. I believe in food stamps. Because I do think if you're this bad with money, like you are, you're always going to be this bad with money. Because I think it's generational and I think it's a uh, personality as well. Look, people who aren't going to stay in food stamps their whole life will get out of it. And people who are going to stay on them for their whole life, like I don't think they need to be homeless. So, you know, yeah, what Yaya says, isn't that illegal? Oh, it's fucking illegal as shit, bro. So that's the dilemma is like we're dealing with people who are financially illiterate. The IRS sucks. The government sucks. Like she doesn't even know she's admitting to a crime on stream. Like that's what I mean. Like I can't I feel so bad because but I also think this part of the population should get a sum of money like a government car and they should be given government housing and if they spend more than that, there's, I don't know. I don't know what to say. They can't. They shouldn't be allowed to, right? Something. And birth control. Jesus Christ, birth control. So it's kind of like it's hard because, look, people that are determined to be exceptional won't end up here. They just won't. And so my brain, my, like, my heart goes out to it, of course, because it's like if this is your bubble and this is how you survive and this is what you know, it's hard for me to expect her to do anything different. You know what I mean? Like, it is hard for me to, like, need to condemn this woman because I'm going to be real. Like, it couldn't be me and it's not going to be you, but it's going to be her. And I feel like government programs are for people like this. 
I do think they sh- I it's weird saying like people should be on birth control because you don't want the government to tell you what to do with your body. But a part of me feels like get on birth control and the government should pay for it. But like permanent, not, not like the pill because they forget to take the pill. You got to put them on an IUD or the rod or something. So it's hard. Like it's really hard, you know. Ugh. Hotep says Bert, giving poor people birth control is eugenics. I know. I know it sounds like that, but it kind of feels like, look, at the end of the day, kids are expensive. Look, rich people aren't having kids because they know it's a bad financial decision unless you can pay for it. The wealthy and educated don't have a lot of kids. And it kind of feels like because they know there's a correlation. And poor people just like uneducated people, whatever that looks like, it's just those two tend to overlap. They just don't know better. So it's like, bro. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I grew up middle class enough to know how to get birth control. There was no way I was risking having a baby. Oh, man. Whew, my heart. Five kids, bro, growing up in this bubble. That's what I mean. Like, she's not a good mom, but she's not a bad person, you know? She's just kind of lost, bro. She doesn't even know left from right. I mean, she was silly enough to make that TikTok. So like a hundred will get me a hundred and eighty worth in food. Is that legal? No, no. But oh. I kind of have. Don't say it. You don't even know not to say it on stream, girl. I have to do what I have to do as a parent. I mean, I can't have no food. And I used I to get. Do- I used to get over Wait, like seven hundred, and now I get. Go- I get three hundred. No. That's it. No, three hundred. No, no, no. Three hundred dollars lasts me a week. A did week. You, no, based on your spending, did you not see what we just went through? There are so many choices surrounding this. Yeah, I could calm down on the food buying. Calm down on the. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I, I don't have time. Like I have to work, and then I have other things I have to do. So, I'd rather just go and buy food really quickly, so that I know that they're fed and I'm, I'm good, and I'm, I could be out of the house. Potentially committing a third degree mm-hmm. felony, up to ten years in prison. My name is Zoe. Yes, or ten thousand dollars. I know that's bad, but I don't really have. I yeah, feel like how I'm, are those kids gonna do with mama away? I just sometimes feel like I'm not. I don't have any other options. So, I mean, I, I'm confused why you can't for one more day a week. Uh, work overnight at a different putting her in prison is a crime i think putting people in prison who are in this situation is unethical i do i I know she's breaking the law but i really think it's important we recognize like she doesn't even know the difference like putting this woman in prison with five kids is fucked up okay so that's not what we should be doing right for an overnight stocking shelves at walmart or something if no, the- no. She needs a crock pot. She needs to throw fucking food in there and keep it away from the kids. So by the time she gets home from work, it's ready to go. 14-year-old kid can do it three days a week. Not that I even want him to do this, but if he can, <gasps> can he not turn that into four? And everyone's sleeping, right? Mostly? Yeah, you're right. Mm. I guess I just feel bad putting that all of that weight on her. So I, I try. Obviously. But that's the problem with having those kids. If you have kids before you're ready, your kids get parentified. Yeah, not but I would also feel then- bad if you went away to jail. Yeah, you're right. So I just have to bite the bullet and, and find another night job. So that way I can be able to do both. All right. I'm going to give you $20 right now. All you have to do is sign up for Acorns using my link in the description below. Sterilization procedures count as birth control and are 100% covered by insurance in the U.S. Um, Not all places, especially not in Texas. In some places, they won't even let you tie your tubes until you're a certain age. So it depends on the Texas uh, rule. And she probably doesn't want to limit herself away from that. She might still want kids. But that's why I'm saying birth control is kind of important here. Um, and there is no actions behind. I truly description below. More taquitos. TMV. <sighs> Listen, I truly, truly am sympathetic to your situation, but mm. your actions behind it start ruining that. Yeah. If it was I'm a single mom and there is no chance for me to work, and my spending is literally all on the necessities, I'm 100% on your side, and there's nothing for me to push back on, and we could look for ways to get a better situation. But, but. But bulk food spending was 8.8% of your overall spending. That's a lot. 8.8 is a lot. It's a massive percentage. Amazon, 10.1%. A lot of the times what on the Amazon, fuck? it's it's not just... She says those at 12.04 a.m. Okay, so this is your new checking account? No, that was the next, the most recent oh, So month. this is your most recent statement that just sent in? You're negative. Mm. You're negative 400. How much is rent? Her mom pays half the rent. But she's not making much. She's making like less than 40K a year, right? 
Why did she have all those babies? Fuck, bro. $100. I have $200 in my checking account right now. I'm no longer negative. But yes, that so was as of last a, night you were negative? Um, like four days ago. Oh, where'd you get the money? Please don't, please don't pay today. Uh, my check. Yeah, my pay. check. Yeah, pay. No payday loans. I haven't taken one out. In like two weeks. A lot of those Amazon purchases were for like Hold your paper. Amazon out. This Hold is your Amazon out. Yes, sir. This is very difficult. Um, let me tell I did you. Just have to buy, filled with taquitos and I did Apple just have bills. to buy like um like a nat thing, and it was like fifty bucks. But that oh. was I'm having like a nat problem so, like, in my huh? house, so I bought oh a nat nat yeah. not nap. Okay, oh more overdrafting. Oh f subway and just taquitos and McDonald's raisin canes. So like a lot of it's overdrafts. Like, it's the same thing. It's the same fucking month, essentially, even though it's a different month. Like food. I guess we're also assuming she has insurance too. She might not have insurance through her company because Amazon often does contract workers so they don't have to pay for things. I don't even know if she has health insurance. Food um, for my cats. And Girl, I'm sorry. You cannot afford to not have a case. <laughs> like, yeah, what do you do if this breaks? Well, they dropped it in the toilet okay, the other day. So we have like 3D glasses. The eclipse is coming up. I, I'm definitely... You know what else is coming up? In rent. Uh, $877.14. Okay, so they edited something out. Thirty-seven forty a month is pretty fucking good for a single mom of five kids, bro. Wait, that's some fucking good money. Whoa, that's that's. I thought she was making twenty-eight hundred. That's good money, bro. The post show was a bit weird, but I think I truly because they haven't figured out what they want it to be yet. Oh, is there actually a post show that we show? Okay. Uh, what? That's crazy. That's a lot of money, right? This is your debt minimum monthly payments. What's your portion of rent? Um, I would I would say it's about nine hundred. You would say because I I give like an extra hundred to two hundred depending on what she asks for. So you have five kids. She needs to be a. F no. Your portion of utilities. That's included. That's just all included. Wait. And the internet. Man, she's really bad with money, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't. I don't use internet. So <laughs> gas is no longer in your budget because you don't have a car. Yay! That's exciting. But what I will be putting. Conrad says thirty-seven forty. Guess she is in low IQ, so it's just impulse control. I wonder what's causing the issue. Trauma could be ADHD, but trauma, you know. Oh, it, the after shows on Patreon. Okay, we're not watching that. I don't care about that. Putting in here is an extra one hundred fifty dollars a month for potential Uber XLs if we okay. need to take the crew. Interesting. Discord said she doesn't seem to understand he's joking when he says that. Maybe she's slightly on the spectrum. Maybe. But damn, she's... Yeah. Huh. Around, okay. You know, and it's like hard to get the bus and all that good stuff. So I think that's fair. Okay. Car insurance doesn't need to be in the budget. Necessary food. That's interesting. Whew, for all y'alls. Well, that's a curious one. It's going to be expensive. Do you know how to budget for a family of six? Well, I'm thinking. I know how to budget. I'm trying to think. I don't think she knows how to budget for a family of six. I don't think she knows how to budget with a family of six. I don't think she knows how to cook or make like a, like do it in a way that makes sense. Like, I don't think she knows how to budget for a family of six. I feel like that's not as much as you would need to not feel stressed for sure. But you could do it. You would feel really stressed though because if rent. Well, rent's only 900 No, wait. Rent's only 900 Wait, let's see what it is. Let's see. So we're going to be aggressively meal prepping. And you're going to go through our budgeting program, and you're going to learn how to the ins and outs of budgeting and how to stick to it. And it's okay. going to be great for you. But we're trying to just get like a basic budget so we can come up with some kind of plan right now. Key. Because I think you can aggressively meal plan, and I think you can do it for about 1200 bucks a month, which actually might be over. Yo, $1,200 of a month for food for 1200 That's too much. That's too much. Oh, wait, is it too much? It depends on what they're eating. It's kind of a lot though. $1,200 for a family of, well, she, I assume she's feeding her mom. So that's for eight people a month. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, do the kids eat school at lunch? Do they get lunch, school lunches? How is she on food stamps on this much? Oh, I guess she's not because she doesn't qualify. So she buys them. Okay. Interesting. But I'm also just trying to be so everybody because I know the 1.5 year old like things would be more expensive and <laughs> God, 
toilet paper fund. This is also now she's talk. only paying nine hundred dollars because her mom pays the other on her disability. We're gonna do four hundred dollars a month. If there's anything else you need to survive on a monthly basis for the household, and it can also include if yeah, toilet paper, utilities, girls, so tampons, pads, because some of the girls are probably in the period age. Okay. I mean, in a new pair of shoes because the 14 year old just yeah i would say up to even 1500 dollars a month for food would be reasonable but i would say that you could also make it work if you cut out the fast food and focused on she's got to get a crock pot that's the answer ran through them you know and that's it goes in that month the school thing goes in that month that's what goes in that month hmm. okay. subscription eh, canceled you just simply can't afford them i'm sorry i mean we're working with scraps here what's yeah. your phone total so um right now my mom and me are in the process of getting our own lines so for now and this separating? month. You mean separating? Yeah. Okay. So I am going to get my own phone lines. I wonder if her mom is draining her spoons. She should kick her mom out if her mom's a, not a contributor and she's, but she, her mom is contributing to rent. And if her mom stays in a room and minds her business, I can't tell if having the mom there is too much stressful or not stressful. So I don't know what the bill You own that be. phone? Um, Almost. Yeah, pretty oh. much. When are you done? I'm not too sure. I have to really look it up. When you own it, I want you to switch to helium. It's 20 bucks a month. It's perfect for people on a budget. It uses the same tower towers. Unlimited everything? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Helium is my new provider. Dude, it's seriously sick. So I'll put 20 bucks in there. Unless it's like months down the road because mm. you're still paying back. But we don't know. Anything else you have to take care of? Gym? I mean, is it, what else? Medical? Anything that is an ongoing expense? I feel like she should be able to keep one subscription for the kids to have like, uh, I think she should keep Disney Plus probably or Netflix maybe. I think she should be able to have one subscription to like uh, put that in the budget because like with the kids and stuff, one one meet. Well, YouTube could work, too, but I think she should have one subscription. Um, I would say no, pretty much. We're all covered for, for that. What's the couch? What's the couch? <gasps> Hotep says, I disagree with the crock pot. The instant pot is superior. You know, whatever works, bros, whatever works, you know. Yeah, whatever is the easiest way to get as much food as possible going. But you got to know how to cook, and cooking is a skill, and so that's difficult. Monthly payment. I just paid off the couch okay, yesterday. Good. Thanks. Okay, so nothing else in the budget? Okay. No. Okay, we might have some wiggle room here, but it's going to be tight. Yep. Oh, we barely made it. Okay. So minimum in order to survive, 3,547.17. But you have 3,740. So an extra one hundred. Now, for the record, I don't think this is CPS worthy at all. She's not like that kind of abusive. She's just without the tools. This is a perfect example of somebody who needs so much financial literacy help, not somebody who needs their kids taken away, not somebody who's like an evil person. She's obviously not trying to be a shit mom. She's just bad at it because she's not she doesn't know how to adult. Adulting is so difficult and that's a real skill you have to learn and that's why I think people take it for granted like oh I'll just become an adult and I am one. You also got to do adult things, you know. $92.83 on a monthly basis is left over if you actually budget, if you're actually disciplined, if we're not getting McDonald's coffee every second of our life and injecting it into our veins. Also, see searching for certain pro bono things, whatever, whatever we can find. Mm. I want to start thinking about how we can collect the rest of this child support, especially the person that can be found. Mm. Uh, whatever we can bring in, it is their responsibility. You're not, you pay the bills. Can I say something, though? Can I say I'm afraid of men who don't pay child support because I feel like they're the ones who kill their wife and kids? You were already willing to abandon your child. I feel like those men are more likely to kill their families just so they don't have to pay child support. I mean, you kind of are killing them emotionally. To have a child and then not to produce child support feels psychotic to me. What happens when you actually budget, when you actually manage money, when you actually connect like an adult and you don't go blow it all. <sighs> I need to check my phone because I'm, I'm two minutes over those. my uh, barber appointment. It's okay, they haven't responded, but oh my gosh, my hair is freaking out. Look at this thing. I can't believe you decided to film with your hair like that. I know, it's way off. I can't believe she was 45 minutes late. It's, it's absolutely wild. So, yeah, the payday loan, we're paying that off. I think she's so financially illiterate that she thought going on Caleb Hammer's show was somehow going to make her more money or help her in a way that, like, had meant that she had to do very little. I think she is so financially illiterate that she just genuinely thought, I'll go on Caleb Hammer's show and my life will be fixed. And that is a form of illiteracy because, again, nothing is a fix everything answer. Not being off five, not being super introspective, not solving like cancer. Nothing is going to be 
the thing that solves all your problems because life itself is suffering. So you must suffer wisely. This woman suffers without any wisdom, bro. In three months with your leftover money. <sighs> with the 12,000, that's the hard oh, wait, one. Wait, which payday loan are you talking about? You only have one, I thought, active. Which one are you referring to? The money line or the... It's good news. I was just going to say I'm the one you showed me. On he needs to stop slamming his hands on the table. I actually think it's super distressing. I'm going to be real. I think it's borderline somewhat inappropriate. Like I want to say, oh, I don't want to say this, but it evokes a little bit of fear. Where I'm like, hey, stop banging on the table. Like it's one thing to do it in a gay way, but he's kind of slamming on the table in a way that like it keeps jolting me. And I don't know if it's just, you know. But I could see why that feels very uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Especially coming from a, a an abusive background for her. Like she already comes from like a kind of scary background. So I wonder if that's probably not the best energy to send towards her. Even though he thinks he's just being funny or something. I don't know. On your phone. Oh, yes. That one is still active. <sighs> but the money line is paid off. I already told you that. Yeah. Okay. I said that at the beginning. It would take 62 months with this money left over to pay off the $12,000 car. Damn. The remaining car loan after you sell your car. Maiden says she's more than financially illiterate. She's life illiterate. True. True. And borrow the difference. <clears throat> and that's insane. Imagine paying off the whole thing. That's five years. So that's unacceptable, obviously. We're not getting ahead. You're mm -hmm. entering 40s. Yeah. So you're never going to be able to invest. It's like so bad. Okay. So reality. I'm hearing that. <clears throat> yeah. Reality time. Reality is at minimum, you have to pick up one night shift somewhere else. I'd pick up two. It sucks. No. no. I so disagree with this advice. I think this is horrible advice. I'm sorry that you have to do it. I don't want you to do it. It's the worst. It's blah, blah, blah. You can also go through bankruptcy. Don't want you to. Your credit's going to be for a long time. And it's going to be very hard for you to take advantage of it. I cannot disagree with this more. Anything you ever need to, if you ever want to in the next seven years or so. I think we're picking up a night shift at Walmart. She's, he's crazy. He's fucking out of his mind. A mom of five who's already sleep deprived and working basically full time. You want her to pick up a second job? What is this, a fantasy land? She makes enough money. She needs to budget better and she needs to be more, she needs to do this slowly. You can't. You cannot be that sleep deprived. Nope. I just, I fucking, that's a dumbass advice. I'm sorry. No. She can get a second job on the internet or second job working from home at most. I don't think she should do this. I don't think she should work two jobs uh, out of the home. Sleep de de deprivation is real. It will add stress. It will literally make her think slower. I think he's I think he's making a mistake here. I think this is very bad advice. This is stupid. She has five kids, bro. No. She needs to fucking get her shit together with the money she's already making and pay off her bill slowly. And the consequence is that you will pay more in interest. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Dumb advice. Walmart, if we can, two night shifts at Walmart. You're working at the <sighs> As just a hardworking mom, yeah. It just it's just because because it's like no. literally the only option other than no. bankruptcy. And that's it's not the only option. You can pay off your bills slowly over time. You will pay more in the long run, but it is better paying interest than with your life. Sleep deprivation leads to car accidents. She could be sleep deprived away from her children. Her kids are never going to see her. She needs to be home to tuck them in. Absolutely not choice if you want to i don't feel comfortable recommending that but i won't ever do bankruptcy and the child support if we get that the child support makes a mess we need to start talking to a potential lawyer about that um hopefully pro bono. Uh, but we can work a couple nights a week extra that seriously you could pay off that 12 at most she could babysit or something on the weekends when she's with her kids already she could dog walk she could do something like that but no thousand dollars these collections that one or file for bankruptcy and start again with shit credit. She's already at 500. It's a 10 year impact, but it might be better. I just I don't think this is good advice. Payday loan and get $10,000 for an emergency <laughs> fund. We could do that, I think, in a couple of years, a couple of years, but a couple of years is nothing. You're going to be 34. Mm -hmm. Your oldest kid's going to be 16, so not even in college yet. Yeah. And they're going to see the, the one and a half year old. They're going to grow up in a household that's not stressed about money. They're going to grow up in a house. With a sleep deprived mother who's stressed because she can't function because sh she can't sleep. No. Sleep is a necessary no.
household where their college might be taken care of. They're going to grow up in a household where mom has a retirement plan. That's my goal. Two years, a two year sacrifice in the grand scheme of life. Life is short, but two years is still quite insignificant, especially when it completely turns our life. No, she doesn't have it. She can't be this fucked in life and you expect her to have a second job that does it. There's no way she's going to maintain that job. She's going to get fired. Then that's going to look worse on her resume. No. Life around. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. And that's what I want to do. That's why I'm here. Remember, this two years in plan only works if you go pick up an extra couple shifts, if we get the child support figured out, which shouldn't be your responsibility. But I'm sorry, again, real world. It's This is not an I wish zone. Yeah. This is a, it's the real world. No, he's wrong. And it's also with you budgeting. The budget I have, and this is a loose budget. You're going to get a more concrete one when you figure out your actual numbers, like what it costs for you to feed the, uh, all the little things. <laughs> little things. Yeah. Yeah, Colleen says, like, yeah, why she was frustrated with the, quote, help she received. I'll give her that. Yeah, I'll give her that. Stu like, I don't like her TikTok. I think that was the bit worst move she made. She's made really bad decisions in her life. But also, like, I don't think Caleb is giving her good advice right now. I would tell her to get a weekend job, if that, a day job. She cannot sacrifice her sleep. It's not worth it. You're not young anymore. You've already had five babies impact your body and your health. Your kids need you at home. You need to sleep. Absolutely not. All those creatures. So gangly looking things too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do have um an extra five hundred credit though coming for paying off that loan. Good. Put it towards so. put it towards the uh, the pay the other payday and that okay. gets you paying it off uh, even quicker. Thing is, you have to budget and for the next two years you have to tell them no. Yeah. And that's so that's hard. Gonna that's gonna be, be so hard for thing. your heart. It's gonna be so hard. But for their future and for the ones that are able to understand complex situations a bit more, the older ones, sit down, explain the situation, be like, this is what mom has been going through and this is where we want to get to and it's going to make everyone's lives better and these are the sacrifices we have to take. And it sounds like the 14-year-old is mature as f honestly. For she is. She's so very, very She'll mature. understand maybe the 12 Is she mature or did she get parentified, which is not maturity, by the way? year old probably not the eighth, three or one and a half, but- Children who have to deal with adult problems are not mature. They're surviving. They're in survival mode. Those are conversations you have that feel appropriate in the moment for you, but we need to learn to say no for these next couple of years. The fun part is, after you get the fully funded emergency fund and all the bad debt is gone, you get to save up and get like a $10,000 car. We get to start, after that, we get to start spending 30% of our money, just about, on fun, if you can do your needs less than 50% or less, if you can, we're at minimum contributing 20% to investing. I'd love you to be able to have fun with the apps like Moomoo and stuff that I get to. It's all great investing stuff. I love it. It's fun. And I wish we could have that conversation. Tafka says her choosing to do that TikTok leads me to believe she's not going to change. Maybe she'll surprise us, but it seems unlikely. Most people don't change. When I say most people don't change, I mean, most people don't come out of this. Most people stay that way and they stay that way forever. Right. John says is bankruptcy taboo. Yeah, it impacts your credit for about 10 years. You're pretty fucked for a while. It takes a lot to come back from it. Dave Ramsey, fun fact, filed for bankruptcy when he was younger. Um, it is difficult when you do bankruptcy. Certain things can be bankrupted, bankrupted so it's kind of difficult. Um, is it seven years or 10 years? I always thought it was 10 years. Maybe it's seven years, but it lasts a long time. Um, but yeah, I... Um, I don't... It, this is always a problem of introspection for me. Right. It's knowing you need help in many ways. It's knowing that you're not able to do the things you want to do. It's recognizing like adulting is hard. So how do I make it easier on myself? And it's by doing the small things. A small thing is not getting another job. That is not a small thing. Small things start with budgeting the small things. See how that feels after a few months. See if you can do it. And then learn to make food at home. Learn to cook. Learn to prepare things. Like this is a very difficult situation, but it's not the worst. I've seen far worse. She absolutely can make this work for her. She's got to have the tools though. But we're not. That's not where you are. But you get to spend so you get, you'll be able to spoil them more than you've ever been able to when you actually get this taken care of and you actually get your together and you sacrifice <gasps> for just a few years. I'm ready to do that because I am. I do want to I do want to eventually invest and learn all of that. So and learn how to make my money work for me. Mm. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to be working for the rest of my life. Well, you said you also I mean, wanted to go back to work, school. But I think right. we still sacrifice and do this for two years and then we go back to school. But that's okay. That's okay. My mom went and got her nursing degree. Um, you know, she. I think it was- Nursing is so emotional labor and so intense and it is a very difficult job. So again, this idea of like, I'll just get a degree and I'll get a job. Like you have children. You have a life. You can't just get jobs because you want jobs. You have to think about how that's going to impact the whole family, right? Upper 20 but she should go to school later. 
20s at the time for her, maybe early 30s. And that's okay. She did that because she wanted to, you know. I'm literally worried she's going to get a second job and be tired and then get fired from the first job. Like, mm mm turn the household around and make some money then my dad started has started a successful small yes miss fishy she should probably be talking to other single moms who can understand her financial burdens but i have a feeling the single mom she knows because she talked about that who are selling her the food stamps i have a feeling they're very similar to her that's the problem when you're in a bubble surrounded by people who you think like everyone's doing this this is life this is what everyone's doing i have a feeling all the people she's surrounded by are in very similar situations business and you turn the household around i grew up in a situation honestly not too uh too far away from this my parents were together and i'm blessed that they still are mm. but they were like working minimum wage when i was born we didn't have much we couldn't do all the things they did spoil me but they spoiled me by going into debt yeah and i saw the struggle and your kids do not need to go through that struggle just a couple years sacrifice that's definitely why i'm here and why i don't i don't want to go through that because i i went through that with my mom and mm. I saw her do that my whole life. So I think that's where I'm learning my habits from. Absolutely. And I would also love to see her step up. Yeah. I if you could work during the day by her. That mom's not going to step up, bro. Watching. That would be great. I would love to be able to do that. I would that's definitely try to have house. a conversation. Kinder says this advice feels very, quote, man advice. Like in a marriage with a man is the breadwinner and only his and his only job is financial support. This is the kind of advice I hear. I, I agree. I think this is man advice. There's a trend if you guys have seen those TikToks where men will try to give single mothers the advice of like a working father. But like working fathers, this is not the same. She's not. I'm going to title this video. I, I'm going to give her better advice than Caleb Hammer because like I'm sorry. This is I think he's giving her bad advice right now because he's giving her like advice you would give somebody who doesn't have five fucking kids. Conversation with her. It's a tough one. Yeah. What I would love to see that because that's, that's, that's a hard one. <laughs> okay. Well, that's your, that, that's my diagnosis and prescription. It's not perfect. Could I ask you a question about? Please. Okay. So I'm, I'm currently going through an, like, an application process for a, a, a CPS caseworker. Oh, okay. Um, because I'm actively looking for a job, I did want, I, I'm applying for that because I do have my background. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have a loan forgiveness program. So that's oh, something... talking about the public student loan forgiveness? Yeah. <sighs> I just, just you can't to... at all. It, wait. If for I what? were to get hired onto that position, if that's, that's for something... student loans though. Yes. It's student, you have loan student forgiveness. Loans? Yes. I thought they reflected in the um that's why I wanted to put myself back in school so I could kind of put a pause on that. <laughs> How much student loans do you have? How much student loans do you have? <laughs> um I think it's like forty thousand. Oh, Oh. <laughs> okay. Are you f my entire life? I assume right now you're on income base and you're not paying. Right. Uh, but the only reason why I haven't started paying was because uh, I was in this limbo of a year and I was deciding what I was going to go do. So. Please don't. Yeah, how from an associates? <laughs> oh, bro. Me. Me. I am stressed. <laughs> as long as it does involve a child. This is crazy. <laughs> This is insane. Oh, girl. Oh. What was I supposed to do? I mean, that was something that really got no, me through No, I just didn't that, know that you had part, them. So. I, like this, I was about to give you your hammer financial score, and that was the end of the conversation. But a mysterious forty thousand. This is. You can't do that. You have to be perfect. You have to be perfect. You can't leave the job. Right. You're going to be fully committed for a long time. I, off the top of my head, I don't remember how many months and consistent payments it takes. And that's I think it's like twenty. Stupid. Oh my gosh! Over the over the course of everything, you have one hundred nine thousand dollars in debt. You have one hundred nine thousand dollars in debt. Oh. 
Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy and apply for school forgiveness. Fuck. <laughs> this is bad, bro. Fuck, that is so bad, bro. Her mom was a bad mom and she's a bad mom and everyone's a bad. Everyone's so bad at life. Man, this is... Where did she get... No, no, guys. There's no way she spent 40K on her associates. What she did was take out loans and she lived off the loans. She took out student loans and used it for housing and food and did all that stuff. I don't think she refused bankruptcy. I think he told her not to do it. She suggested bankruptcy. He said not to do it. I think she should do bankruptcy. And God, loan forgiveness for the 40K if possible. God, that fucking sucks. Oh, fuck. I'm stressed, bro. I'm fucking stressed. Yeah, it's right now. That's a fact. Wow. Public student loan forgiveness is a real and could be a good thing. But the rules always change administration to administration. So be wary yeah. of that. Um, okay. You got to be perfect on it. You cannot leave the I'm job. I'm definitely dedicated. It's something that I'm serious about if it helps to offset my loan. Ah, Techno says, I spend, I'm just saying, I spend 32K on my associates plus paying out of pocket. No housing, no nothing, just tuition. Yeah. I mean, God, it's got to be different for everybody, right? Damn. Yeah, you can't waive student loans with bankruptcy. But it's one of those things where she might have to. And then look for fo like loan forgiveness for the student loans if possible. Fuck. Then I'm all in. Why are those other two guys not in the picture, by the way? Speaking of dedication. Um, the <sighs> oldest, he lives in Colorado and he is involved. She goes to see him sometimes. But okay. when I was married to my first husband who was in the military, she was like one. And he promised to adopt her during our marriage. Never did. He, I think it was. Like to take her away or? It was something he held over my head. And then by the time when I was ready to leave, it was kind of like dropped her too. So he, her father willingly signed over his rights and everything to her so that the military father could adopt her. And she would, you know, feel more inclusive in the family and everything happening because she was only three months old when we met. And then he decided not to. Okay, I'm going to say something controversial. But if you're a single parent and you are not fucking for sure this is the love of your life, don't introduce people to your kids and don't get married and don't hook up with people unless you are on birth control. And it's very specific because generally speaking, and I'm going to generalize, okay, I know single moms need to get laid too, single dads need to get laid too, but genuinely you can't be making more babies when you have a three month old. You can't be falling in love. The baby's three months. Jesus Christ. I'm so exhausted. This is, this, she might be a, is this a one? Her introspection level is very, very low. But so much of that plays into what tools you have. It doesn't feel like she has a lot of tools. And it sounds like her mom didn't help give her any, and she hasn't mentioned a dad. So she might not have had, a, you know, that option. She didn't even mention aunties, uncles, cousins. I'm not hearing anything about extended family. I'm not hearing anything about anything. So three months after she had her first kid, she meets her then military husband and he doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Fuck. Damn, bro. 1.5. Balto says she's a 1.5. <laughs> Maybe. It's like I want to give her so much um, understanding because of her upbringing. But man, people are in uh, far worse situations and doing much better. But she, yeah, she needs to get her fucking tubes tied, bro. Damn. Damn, this is painful, bro. So I was put in a position now where he cannot readopt his own daughter because of state laws and the military um, ex-husband was like, no, I'm not going to adopt her. She's not my kid. It's not my responsibility. So that's No, her last kid is a year and a half. You know? Where I am with her. My son's father, <laughs> I that was the sporadic payments. And then my youngest daughter, she's the one right now where we're trying to locate her father. Oh my gosh. And he he does live in San Antonio, but he's um dual citizenship, I believe, from Mexico, so he's really hard to find. But they are in the process of locating, so we'll continue this conversation. We're gonna connect you with resources. This is all I can take right now, I'll be honest. This is a lot. Okay. But we will connect you with student. Dan, he's emotional, labored out, bro. Uh spoons in the chat. Caleb needs some spoons, bro. Own things. Um in public student loans to give misinformation and all that and we'll walk with you and 
hold your hand. Let's do your hammer financial score. Make sure to stick around for the post show where we where we connect these two lovebirds. <laughs> I'm assuming that's like a joke. Obviously, she shouldn't be dating anyone. I'm not even at this point. It's not even funny. You should not be dating anyone. You should be single with your legs closed, focused. <laughs> um, the I only person you should be having sex with is a sex worker who's fucking strapped, bro. Strapped? No. No. What? Who's wearing a condom, bro? And you need birth control. I think he likes older women, not his type, so. You're older than him. You're older oh, than I am him. older than him. Yeah, let's see if we can get a six one on the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, spending in a- Caleb, come on. <laughs> <laughs> spending in a budget. Three out of, I'm losing my damn I'm already mind. sweating under these lights. He's making it worse. <laughs> Three out of 10, no, two out of 10. That was really bad. No, it just went to the bathroom. I think uh, his, his, uh, he has to- His nerves are shut. Yeah. That, I mean, come on. Zero out of 10 collections. Uh -uh. Emergency fund, nothing. Real estate, nothing. Retirement, nothing. Jesus. So any budget's the only thing that saved you because at least, well, f kind of, not really. Uh, Hammer Financial Score, 0.5 out of 10. Make sure to check out all the resources linked in the description below as they are what I use or would use in specific situations, including the best budgeting program in the history of the internet. Today. Love that. The only person she should be having X with is her vibrator. Bro, get this girl a vibrator, bro. That was extremely emotionally exhausting. Fuck me, bro. That was a lot. That was a fucking lot. Oh. I'm a little fucked up, bro. Damn. Sydney says, if this is sexual harassment, like the bar is so low, bro. So just a reminder, if you guys missed it, in the beginning, we watched a TikTok that she posted saying she felt like mistreated on the show. She felt sexually harassed. Um, she felt abused and like she wasn't given resources, like he said. I mean, honestly, you would give this girl a million dollars and she'd spend it in a year. You could give this girl a million dollars. She's the stereotype. She's the statistic. You give her a million dollars and it will be gone. Guaranteed. You know what she would do with it? She would buy a million dollar house. I don't know if people know this. If you're given a million dollars and you buy a million dollar house, now you just have the equity in the house. You don't have a million dollars. And if you're lucky, the house sells and you still have that cash, but you still, like I knew a couple, a family, and they were like, let's put all our money together and buy a house. And I was like, oh, you should buy like a $500,000 house since that was kind of like the middle class choice. And they're like, no, we want to buy an $800,000 house. I was like, why? They're like, well, it's nicer. And I'm like, but you could pay in cash for the 500,000. Why would you buy the 800,000? And it's because people just think, you know? <sighs> Homeboy says, so back to her TikTok, how valid would you rate her claims? Um, let's go back to the energy of the TikTok. Wait, did I X out the TikTok? I must have. Okay, let's go back to the energy of the TikTok and see how we would do it together. Let's see. Okay, so this is the same girl. Let me pull it up for y'all. Let me pull it up for you. Okay, so this is her personal TikTok. Let's skip through because it's 10 minutes. And you tell me, what do you guys think? I feel like I needed to make this video because I need to bring um, some points out to the public, especially um, with the fact that regarding financial audit with Caleb Hammer, um, this is getting to a point where I'm not playing anymore because this show, Caleb and his team are pushing out to the public that they are here I would have been ridiculed and labeled such horrible, slandish things, crazy, outlandish title that he placed on that video. And to top it all off, the the way that he portrayed me in the picture versus just any other, if you go through any other YouTube video in there, these women are not, they don't have tattoos all over their faces. They weren't called trailer trash. Is it because of... 
somebody said, I'm so sorry he treated you that way, but five kids is a lot of decisions. And she said, and your ignorance is still commenting on my children. This is not about my kids. This is about the lack of respect he has for women. Please excuse yourself if you can't see that. So she's trying to make a larger argument that like he's toxic or like misogynistic. Somebody said, well, I make well over six figures and choose not to have kids because I don't think I can afford them. She said, disrespect the great people online and it make it okay just because they have following. I'm not going to sexually be disrespected or harassed. It's not okay. And so she's basically trying to make an argument of something that like didn't happen. <sighs> yeah, it's kind of interesting of the fact that I'm a mom of five kids like you should be ashamed of yourself you should seriously be ashamed of yourself your mom really needs to sit down and have a conversation with you because he I honestly he has so he has millions of subscribers One okay million. so many people who don't have a voice and while my feelings may be hurt, I'm a very strong individual. I'm a very strong person and I can make it through anything. And people's judgments. Like, I get it. But you don't talk about those kinds of things when you're in a business setting, when you're doing an interview and you're truly trying to help someone. This guy does not have his head on. I mean, on he's not a Christian, right? It's not like he's a Christian or something. Right. And people like me are being dragged. Ooh, where's your shame, girl? She wouldn't have any. So shame is from the bubble. Guilt is from your values. So she doesn't have the values part, so she's not going to feel guilty. And she doesn't have the shame part because her bubble's probably not shaming her. Her mother isn't going to do it because her mom's the way she is. Her siblings or her cousins or whatever she mentioned, she didn't mention, I guess, that won't happen. Her friends are also single moms who are selling her food stamps, so they're not going to shame her. And shame doesn't work anyways. She should decide what part of this is her values, right? You said, can I look at the comments on his video? Sure. So, oh, and my cats had five kittens. Oh my God, your whole house needs to stop breeding. So like dead emoji. You should date Caleb's producer. I hear he recently overcame autism. I don't know what that's about. Okay. I just want everyone to know the box of condoms is $10. You should hand out uh, free coffee makers and a loaf of bread to every guest. Could get a sponsor. Ooh, Graham Stefan. I, no, I think Graham shut down his coffee business. I was going to say he could do it. Don't have more children if you only if your only child care solution involves the oldest child watching their younger siblings while you work. That's unfair to the oldest child. Your parentified daughter will 100% resent you for taking away her childhood. She deserves to be a kid too, so fucked up. Wait, wait, wait. So military guy is paying a thousand in child support for one kid he has with her and she's trying to drag him to court for more because it's not enough for her to provide for her four other kids. Oh, this is for the two kids, but the other two to three kids, baby daddy should pay. OK. Man, oh, man, bro. One thing the show has taught me above everything else, no payday loans, no payday loans. Man, this is fucking sad. I'm fucking depressed, bro. I'm fucking depressed. I'm fucking depressed. <sighs> they said this is an uphill battle. Sell the car, eat beans and rice, take two to three extra jobs. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you so hard, bro. Two to three extra jobs with a mom of five. Fuck all of you. Fuck all of these men in these comments. Are you any of you with single fathers with five fucking kids? Are you single? Are you single fucking fathers with five fucking kids? Fuck all of you. You're fucking two to three jobs. I'm going to fucking. Absolutely not, bro. Just fucking Jesus Christ. How about all the fucking men in her life? They go to get a couple jobs, pay child support. Fucking a bro. Two to three fucking extra. Fuck you, bro. Fuck you so hard, bro. Fucking A, bro. I hate these people, bro. Get two to three more jobs. You know who that's for? People without kids. Two to three jobs are not for people with kids, bro. Fuck, that's so dumb. That's so fucking stupid. Ooh. Caleb needs to start telling people to go to thrift shops and stuff like coffee makers. For sure, bro. She needs to start going to thrift shops. She needs to fucking cook cheaper. Like, oh my...
Bro, I hate these people. <sighs> yeah, it's just like, yeah. Look, ultimately, she's a very difficult human. For sure. And there are a lot of other people who need more help. But you know what? I really do think this is what government programs are for. But then what do you do if they're on a government program? Let's say she was on a government program that solved all of her financial problems, but she still wanted to spend more. Do we ban her from spending more? Maybe we should have a rule. See, that's the problem is like, you don't want government overlords coming into your life, right? Like, that's the problem. But like, fuck, if I hear one more person tell a mom of five to get three more jobs, it's so unreasonable. It's so fucking, it's so stupid, bro. But yeah, I'm trying to wonder. I feel like there's, she could just live on the budget she has and cut back. Oh. So fucking dumb. Fuck. That attitude really pisses me the fuck off. I know because I work multiple jobs and I work a lot and it's fucking stressful. The idea of one kid, let alone five, I would want to die. Like you're so fucking dumb. Discord says I work two jobs and work 60 to 95 hours a week and my life fell apart. I did not fix all my financial woes and hardships. It caused more hardship. People are so stupid about this shit. American ass ideals about working hard. Bro, that's just, you know, she needs to do the basics. The basics. She can do this. But she has to be willing to change. Genuinely, see, I don't think she's ready for somebody to come in her life and actually change it. I don't think she's ready yet. But I think when she's going to be ready, it's going to be good. But I don't think she's ready yet. She can start with the small stuff now. Okay. Like, start with the small stuff now. But she's not, I don't think she's ready to quite change. That TikTok was unhinged. Oh, that's, fuck. I, human's going to human, bro. Human's going to fucking human. See how she's not evil? But she's so far from joy. You see how she's not a bad person, but fuck, she's bad at life. She's bad at life. She's bad at mothering. She's bad at finances. She's bad at everything. Except her hair do her, her hair was nice. Is there one thing she was good at? Is there one thing that was positive? One thing that was good? <sighs> Sydney says, I don't think she will follow through with the small stuff. No way, bro. Yeah, no way. Kaylin says this public shaming did not work. No, shaming people doesn't work. Punishment doesn't work. How much fucking data has to come out before we understand it doesn't work? Only the illusion of it works when you're ready to change. Ironically enough, shame and punishment is an illusion of look, making it look like it works because you were ready to change in the first place. But when you're not ready to change, it doesn't actually work. So when they say this works, it only works if you're ready. So it's not even the thing that's working. You know what works? When you're ready. You don't need to be punished when you're ready. You don't need shame when you're ready. When you're ready, that's what works. Shame and punishment don't work. Being ready is what, what really makes a difference. Oh. <clears throat> mm. Bro. Does Caleb's show talk about the positives during this financial train wreck episodes? I don't think so. He should probably add that in. What are you doing right? Because genuinely people got to know what they're doing right. There was a show on Netflix my partner and I watched. It was really, it was kind of like Bill Nye for the science guy kind of. But it was, um, what was it? 100 Humans, I think called? Something like that. And it was about like uh, they would run experiments and see what would happen. It was very a uh, controlled group. And one of the things they showed is like if somebody came in juggling, it was juggling plates, if they were positive, the people would do better the next time. But if they were negative, the people would do worse the next time they came in. And so I have to remember that too when I'm going off on the internet that optimism, positivity does make a big difference. But without like lying to people, you know what I mean? It's difficult. But yeah, I definitely don't think negativity works. I think negativity feels good, but it doesn't actually help the other person. But then sometimes you don't have the energy and spoons to be empathetic or sympathetic. Look at Caleb. He ran out of spoons for her. He ran out of a care to help her. And honestly, like I said, if you gave this woman a million dollars, it would be gone within a year. There's no way she would keep that money. There's no way she would know what to do with it. She doesn't even know what to do with the money she's making now. You can't give a million dollars to people who don't know how to spend 4000 you know, it's just how it goes. 
Oh, holy fuck. How exhausting, bro. Tanya says, how do you handle judgment from other bubbles? Talk it out. Do yoga. Work out. Go to therapy. <laughs> it depends on how you're being impacted. It depends. Is the other bubbles like putting you on death row and you're about to be killed for being gay? Or is the judgment from far away? Do you have to interact with those bubbles? Like how are they playing a role in your life? It just depends, you know? Holy fuck. Oh my God, Miss A, thank you. Unrelated, but you look so pretty today, Britt. Oh my God, thank you. I started off the show being sweaty, so I put my hair up. So it's like kind of sideways, like the leaning tower of Pisa. But you know, here we are. Oh, Jesus. Even Indiana, my husband and I have been talking about this. You know, she's getting older. She just had a birthday. Do you guys know Indiana just had a birthday? She's a weven. Indiana emoji in the chat. She just turned 11, our Indiana Jones, and she's getting older. And we've been talking about like, okay, in eight years when she's on to cat heaven, are we going to get another animal? Or do we want to spend that time and money and resources on something else? Because it does take time, money, and resources. I love my cat. I love her so much more than I love 8 billion other people on this planet. I love her so much, right? But she is a responsibility. We don't vacation because we're afraid of leaving her alone. We don't want to board her because I hate everybody. We don't want to burden people with her and we love her so much. We just want to spend time with her. So we think about that. Like, hey, what if in eight years she passes? Would you like to spend that money and resources on something else for a while? Because we, I genuinely hate leaving her. I hate going on vacation. I hate leaving her alone. I hate getting people to sit her. I just hate leaving her. But that's a that's an emotional responsibility. Even a cat, you know, but here are people adopting dogs, adopting cats, not thinking about it. And it's just like, I'm, we're not those kinds of people. So think about what kind of person you are and think about how to organize your life. In my head, in real life, I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I Thank you.